So on our way from Milwaukee when we were visiting the Gibbs shirt to uh, Pine Ridge in South Dakota, we had the chance to visit our alma mater, uh, went on a state university, and I, I don't think anything really monumental happened. Yeah, we got to Winona just to crash for the night, but um, I don't think anything really interesting happened, anything noteworthy. We ended up in Mitchell, South Dakota. Mitchell, South Dakota is home to the legendary Corn Palace. The world's only Corn Palace. When it comes to the Corn Palace, I think we really... <laughs> when it comes to the Corn Palace, Spencer and I were the definition of skeptical. The outside is, is pretty much made of corn. It's exactly what you'd picture, except bigger and better. Okay, get hey out. guys, where are we going right now? The one and only. The, the, the world's, world's only, only Corn Palace. <laughs> the Corn Palace. We've been it's following like, signs. Oh, for, there's another one. Here's another right. sign right here. Oh, here it is. Wow. Right? <laughs> Look at that. that. Is so much cooler. <laughs> Look at that palace. Look at this. Look at this corn right now. What? It's huge. It's awesome. There's tons of corn stuff everywhere. Uh, the building's pretty much made out of corn, as you can see by a lot of these murals and stuff. Look at this creepy it. corn right here. Pretty successful trip, we think. Um, Although you didn't buy that that coon hat, that coon skin hat, but like the you know like a glass slipper. But I just couldn't spot $7.99. So our first night on the road, and it was our first uh, real test of uh, lodging for the night. We had no idea where we were gonna sleep. Wiley, being the innovator that he is decided to check some doors, and the door to the high school football field press box was open, and it had outlets for our cameras, and it had Wi-Fi, and it had enough space for us to lay out our, our sleeping bags for the night. So first night on the road, and we had this fantastic place to stay. So from Mitchell, it was a super long drive all the way across South Dakota. Uh, Kai got a cactus stuck in his ankle. Driving into a place like Pine Ridge, you just kind of, I don't know, it feels real after that. Like that was the first moment where we looked at, at our surroundings and we just felt kind of completely out of our comfort zone. And we all kind of were silent for the next 10 minutes of the drive because we're kind of just in shock. And you just see uh, on either sides of you, it's just overwhelming the, the poverty that you can actually just see from people's houses and see people you know, on the street. We just had no idea what, what to expect at that point. We didn't know where the Remember organization was. We didn't know where we were going to sleep at night. We were already looking for places to, you know, set up our tent for the night. It was really just everything coming together. We were just ridiculously stressed about it. So we went from that state of mind to finding the Remember organization, just being completely welcomed in by them. Definitely overwhelmed at first by just the welcome that we had at Remember. We get there and, and the first thing he says is, uh, your bunk beds are right in here, uh, dinner's in half an hour. So, we, I mean, we went from little food and setting up a tent in a sketchy place to, to like the best arrangement we could have hoped for. Welcome again to Pine Ridge, uh, to the Remember organization. Remember takes its name from an ancient, defini uh, ancient definition, which is important. Put back that which is broken has been broken, to remember, to reassemble. We're not here to fix things, so to speak. We are here to stand with the folks on Pine Ridge um, and build relationships. That's first and foremost. You know, like when you first come out here, you know, like it, it's almost like you're in shock. You're like, you're the heartland of America and you see people living in basically the definition of poverty. It's something you expect to see maybe in like Central America, South America, but not in the heart of America. Every time I've been here, there's been a bit of culture shock, so to speak, with just that 
The reservation is opposite from everything I know. Jump on any computer and you can find the stats about Pine Ridge. That the unemployment rate is between 80 and 90 percent. That it's the second poorest place in the entire Western Hemisphere, second only to Haiti. But what you won't find on Wikipedia are the people who are working to make Pine Ridge a better place. People like those that remember. What we do is because we're so centered around construction, like we go out to a work site, we um, build a, a wheelchair ramp or start a trailer, and you step back at the end of the day and you're able to see it. Like you're able to see the fruits of your labor, and it's, it's definitely the, yeah, the reward, not only for myself personally, but for the volunteers and for the people who need it the most. We're in the workshop where they're building bunk beds. It's an absolute machine over here. Just cranking it out. <laughs> I think it's been two weeks now. I got to go two weeks ago and install a bed in um, a trailer, a very rundown trailer, where I mean the water was coming out of a hose from the ground, and it was minimal lighting and things like that. And the kid came running out. I want to pick out my sheets and my pillow. I'm so excited. He just was so excited for this experience. So I think that's what I love the most is getting to meet the people, getting to hear their story because they're, if you're willing to sit and listen, they are so willing to share and tell you about their story. I think when we first got there and we heard there was. We were kind of joking with the idea of what if we ended up in like a Native American powwow. <laughs> they tell us there's a Wachiki and we're all invited. We're ecstatic. And so after the, after the bumpy bus ride, um, we get there and we were told by Ted, who was basically in charge, that uh, we needed permission from the head, basically the chief. We're at a powwow right now. So right now I think we're looking for the heads. Yeah, I don't, what would you call them? I don't know who the head is, so we're looking for them right now. So Kai, of course, sneaks up there, pokes him, asks him if we can, if we can uh, film, and he says yes to our surprise. But it's super cool. We're, yeah, this is ridiculous. This is somewhere that we did not think we'd be. A real power. Right now. A real power. Grab one of these hoops. It's time to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, it's time to start the work day. Shut up. <laughs> Unique, so I walk into the building this morning and somebody has graciously brought us some history books. Wonderful. And it says, Indians, Americans, once Lord, Lords of America, they fought a losing battle to save their lands from the white man and his manifest destiny. High rates of substance abuse make alcohol one of the most controversial topics on the reservation. At the center of the controversy lies the town of White Clay, Nebraska, just two miles away from Pine Ridge. Because having alcohol of any kind is illegal on the reservation, many people from Pine Ridge make the short drive to White Clay to get their alcohol. And the effects are clear. A town of only 14 people, it has four liquor stores. Liquor stores which sold on average 13,000 cans of beer per day last year. Of course there are many people who are working to change that trend and we were able to sit down with a group of people protesting the sales of alcohol. Alright, uh, my name is Oloa Martinez and I was born in, into the Thunderhawk family and I was raised among the little and little sky by. Um, I love it here. It's my home life. Yeah. There's a lot of bad stuff said about it, but that's nothing compared to the good. You know, people always focus on the bad, and of course, um, we do have a lot of bad, but you know, all of that, every social ill we have here within the homeland, 98% of it is alcohol related. For real, all of it. 
yeah and that's what and everything and that's what we want to be here for is to show like the, the good that people are doing mm-hmm. on the reservation and everything and, and to really highlight and tell other people about it and yeah how they can help that's good because we don't get that usually people want to know about all the bad stuff yeah our journey in pine ridge was incredible and we learned a lot during our time there We learned that the Lakota people trust the Remember organization because of the great work they do day in and day out. We learned that the people on the reservation aren't defined by their statistics. They're just kids who want to play basketball or skate, and they're just parents who care most about protecting their families and their traditions. And maybe most importantly, we learned that you have to experience it for yourself. If you make the trip to Pine Ridge and meet the people who call the reservation home, there's no way that it won't make you a better person. These people don't want our charity or our pity. They just want the same opportunities and success that we have. Who's your favorite team? The Miami Heat, really. And, and uh, why is that? Because they're cool. They got all red and black and white. So is it mainly a colors thing or? LeBron, LeBron James? D Wade. LeBron James makes okay. that team look weak. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's too much of a show off. Yes. I like this guy.